Is your body weight fluctuating big numbers up and down? You want to figure out how to speed up your metabolism? Watch this. Our next caller is Allie from Illinois. Allie, what's going on? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, had a quick question. I first want to say thank you for taking my call, my question. But um, a while back, I was listening to an episode, and it sparked a thought that although I know about macros and have a pretty good idea of how to track, I don't have a good idea of what it's like to build metabolism. I think I specifically heard you, Sal, talking about how you helped your wife build metabolism and stay lean with increasing her calories. And that's definitely something that's been difficult for me. So I wondered, what is the method for that? Yeah, no, good question. Um, but do you mind if I, if I get into yeah, a little bit more background stuff. detail? Because I'm looking at your question here, um, the one that you wrote in. Do you mind if I go through some of this, Allie? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it says, so you grew up as a gymnast um, and you've been working out for a long time and you've seen your 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 body weight go up and down quite a bit. So you've seen some some big fluctuations in body weight. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Usually a diet phase down to 140 and then just more recently having okay. difficulty getting okay. back down. Okay, Ali, I'm, I'm going to uh, get maybe a little bit more personal, okay, if that's, if the, if that's okay. Sure. I know the yeah. sport of uh, gymnastics, um, especially for women, is one of the most challenging in terms of body image issues. Um, it's there's there's it's just really hard because yes, you are judged by your performance, but body size is often talked about quite a bit. I, I've known I've coached some athletes who've actually had their coaches weigh them um, before practice and all that stuff, and so we've had to deal with some of the damage of that after. Do you feel like you've had some body image issues as a result of that? Or is this something that is not an issue? Um, I'd say a mix. I feel like I also coach. So I kind of have that like mental space to help other athletes get through it. But definitely as a child, it was there to like the pressure to look a certain way and perform a certain way. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, and the reason why I'm asking is when you see big weight fluctuations, that usually points to a relationship with food that's this kind of come or go, restrict or you know everything goes type of um, attitude because you know we're talking about a pretty big swing in body weight. So when it comes to tracking, I'm always hesitant to recommend that someone in, in a, maybe a situation like yours goes and really starts to measure and track things because what that tends to contribute to is is what you've maybe been experiencing where you track and so everything's like on point and then you get sick of tracking for whatever reason maybe because it's maybe motivated by self-hate or maybe you're just done with it and then you go way off in the other direction so i would recommend for someone like you to to not pay attention to those things and rather look at behaviors instead um, and performance so I would, what, what in your workouts, what brings you joy in your workouts? What part of your workouts do you really enjoy the most? Is it the strength or the stamina or the body control? Do you have anything specific like that? I think definitely more of the body control. Like I enjoy like also just like the mel melodic of it, like increasing weight, seeing that progress. Okay. And then like the workout, just, I guess, yeah, seeing gains and strength. Perfect. So there's another thing that you're you're not asking or, or that I think is important, right? So um, if she doesn't have body image issues and that's not a problem, the other thing that I see with gymnasts is their their dedication to training and consistency and intensity is can be uh, way overdone. Right. You have that, and that's just athletes in general. It's a, but, it's a switch. And so yeah. if you have been applying that mentality for most of your weight training life. Uh, I would be, that's what I would be looking at right away. So let's just say there's, uh, I mean, for sure, Sal is right to look into uh, the body image issues. If there's anything there that you feel you're self-conscious and maybe that's driving some of your behaviors, but let's say it's not. Um, then the other thing I would say is your athletic background may be driving the way you're programming, which means are you the person who's training, you know, six, seven days a week and you're doing cardio sessions for an hour for three to five times a week and also cutting calories down below 2000? If that's you, then that's your way overdoing it. And somebody okay. like and, and if we're going to rebuild your metabolism, it's going to look something completely different. I, I'm going to cut your cardio sessions. I'm going to make you only train three days a week doing something like MAPS Anabolic. Um, if you need to move and we need to find a way to counter some of the calorie increase that I'm going to do to you, I'm going to ask you to walk. We're not going to do any intense cardio. And we're going to focus on building strength. 
And um, I'm o- I'm okay with you tracking if you don't have the issues that Sal's saying. If Sal is hitting something that you feel is on point, then I think he's right. And then going towards a more intuitive uh, way of paying attention, like ver- versus weighing and tracking and um, you know getting o- out of out of control with being super hyper focused on that. But if you feel confident that there isn't uh, insecurity stuff going on or body image issues going on. And it's purely, I'm just trying to figure out I'm, I'm not, what am I not programming right to, in order to build my metabolism, then I would be looking at the amount of volume intensity that you're doing in your training and how little you're eating in comparison to your, your body size. And, uh, I would want you to be up towards 25 to 2,700 calories, not right away, but that would be the goal is to get your, your body size and type up to that, with you not training six days a week with a ton of cardio on top of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, here's some nutrition advice that doesn't involve specific tracking. You can try something like this, Allie. Um, you could try uh, just a few things. One, avoid any heavily processed food. So eat only whole natural foods um, and then eat in this order, protein, fat, um, and uh, vegetables, and then carbohydrates. So I would go like your meat, then your vegetables, and then if you have room and you're still not satisfied – then eat your carbohydrates. That that alone typically gets somebody's eating a little bit more appropriate. And then focus on your performance in the gym. Focus on what's making you feel good and what's making you stronger. And that should bring you to a faster metabolism in a, a healthy way. Healthy in the sense that it doesn't make you it doesn't cause more dysfunction uh, down the road or or this boomerang effect at the end where uh, you know you're everything's on track and then you kind of go off track uh, with everything. Are you following any of our programs at all? I do have access to MAPS Anabolic, and I my program before was loosely kind of based on that, so I've adapted some of the trigger sessions into what I was already doing. Okay. So you're working out, what, five days a week then? Um, yeah, five to six. And how, how, how long are your workouts typically? Um, maybe hour and a half, including a warm-up. Okay. And so, okay. I appreciate your honesty. I would, so go maps anabolic as it's laid out. Yeah. Follow it to a T. Just follow okay. it to a T and then do the things I said with nutrition and then start from this too. Before you eat, uh, this sounds silly, but I swear to God, it makes a huge difference, right? Literally you have your meal, make sure you sit down to eat it. You're not distracted. And then ask yourself, is this going to nourish me in a healthy way? That's it. And then eat your food. It sounds silly, but what it does is it brings awareness around what's going on. And do this before you eat anything. Uh, I think what we tend to do, especially when we when, when we see body weight fluctuations, is we don't do that around the foods that we don't want to be around uh, aware around. So oh, I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to eat this you know, sleeve of Oreo cookies or I'm going to overeat this whatever. So just try yeah. doing those things and then kind of allow this process to work. Um, so – you know, uh, based off everything we said, again, if you feel like that that was your tendency in the past, mm-hmm. I would go in that direction, and I th- it'll it'll definitely move you in the right way. And those are some of the details I left out when I talked about my wife and speeding up her metabolism. She had some of those issues before, and we did I did coach her through them, through working uh, on behaviors, and it was hard. It took a year of her to really finally mentally understand, you know, kind of what was going on because she wanted to go back to what she was doing before. Ali, is any is anything striking a chord for you? I mean, does anything sound like it's possibly you that we're talking? Yeah, I feel like it's maybe halfway. Like, I definitely do have the tendency to be like more driven in like just my paths. Like, it has to be this way. I have to train this way and eat this way, um, and then maybe a little bit of the body um, self image as well. Just like I definitely try to be aware when I eat, but I know that it's just tendency. I slip on my phone and don't yeah. think about it. And mm. then I go to the kitchen to put something away and I pick up a handful of whatever Yeah, and it doesn't go in. So yeah, definitely a bit of both. It seems to be a bit of intensity there. I think, you know, sort of relieving that from you will go a long way and just kind of, you know, being able to uh, not be so hyper-focused on what's good, what's not good, uh, and, and just try to find things that'll help nourish you and, and, and have, have you feel good in your performance. Yeah, well, you know, you know, Ali, you're, uh, I'm going to make a guess here. You said you're a coach. I, yeah. bet, I bet you are an excellent coach to the people that you work with, and I bet the advice I'm giving you or we're giving you right now is what you would tell one of your <laughs> athletes if they <laughs> came to you. Yeah. And, I, yeah, I'm, and this is true for... All coaches and trainers, I'm going to say this right now, maybe not all, but 90-something percent of us, we're way better with our clients than we are with ourselves. 
I have practices I do with myself that I would comp- I would never tell clients to do, and I'm fully aware of this. It's very challenging. So one of the pract- one of the things that I do before I do certain things, I say, would I have a client do this? How would I advise a client if they came to me with the same challenge? And that usually gives me the best answer. It doesn't always mean I'll listen, because sometimes or often I don't want to listen to myself, but it does give us the best answers. So give that a shot. Say to yourself, okay, if I was a student coming to me saying this, what would I tell them? It's it's also important that you recognize that um, the greatest challenge that you're going to have doing this is you probably will see a little bit of weight gain. I mean, we're trying to increase calories. You're trying to get stronger. We're hopefully going to be building muscle. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's and, a tough yeah, one. So one of the things that you, you've got to trust this process, and this this is always the most difficult part, is you talk to these guys that give you advice about speeding your metabolism up. We tell you something like, hey – reduce all the the volume of training you're doing and also let's increase some calories and then you get you're getting on the scale every day and you're like oh my god i've gone up three to five pounds and you freak out and then you go back to your old behaviors uh, but you got to trust the process here and stay and if that means that you uh, stay away from the scale for a while uh then do that um i i'm okay with the tracking scale stuff so long as you got the self-awareness to know that to know that this could be a tendency or, or the things that sal's kind of alluding to um, but just be aware of that, that that's going to be the first major hurdle is you're going to probably see a little bit of weight gain, but don't be focused on that. Focus on your, your strengths, focus on your, I'm looking, what I'm looking for is you to get stronger and to tell me things like, man, Adam, I'm, my, I'm getting hungry now. My appetite's kicking up. Like these are all positive signs that we're moving in the right direction, regardless of what we're seeing on the scale. Yeah. Allie, I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide. If you don't have it, have it. I think that'll help you. Okay, I don't, but thank you. All right, thanks, Allie. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a great day. You too. Did she say she had anabolic? I didn't ask. <laughs> She's, uh, you know what, Doug? Let's uh, eat, send her that too. If she I does think it. she said she had it. Okay, I'll, I'll put think, it in there. I think she did say she had. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think she did. You know, I tell you, man, um, and I could tell as we're talking to her, I can tell we're hitting maybe some, some, you know, some nerves. Yeah, I've trained ex gymnasts. I've trained ex like uh, synchronized swimmers and divers. <laughs> Um, uh, figure you skaters, synchronized swimmers. They have, and and they're and they are they're really. Hey, man, I tell you, you ever watch that? That's an insane. <laughs> no, dude, that's so random. I'm that like, is so yeah. random. Like, oh wow. yeah, I, I can't tra- say I, I've trained a lot. I've actually trained a lot of gymnasts. <laughs> have you? Yeah, yeah. No, I had a client I trained that, bocce ballers. No, shut up. <laughs> that was directed at me. Yeah. I actually had a client who was an alternate in the Olympics in synchronized swimming. But it, that growing up in that environment, yeah, you, it, it's. It, I swear, when they bec- when they came to me, it was always like we got to deal with this this these old behaviors this yeah. body image issues it's really really challenging and then what you said Adam so true they have this switch that yeah. they've trained so hard where they can cool. literally turn it on ignore pain ignore tiredness ignore body signals and just go because that's what got them successful yeah when they were athletes. all eyes are on them I mean yes. they're the center of focus and like you had brought up you know in terms of like weighing in and then also you got to look a certain way you got to move your body a certain way you know that sticks with you like I, that that kind of intensity and pressure you place on yourself you know it's it's just tough because a lot of times you don't see that about yourself uh you don't see that uh you know that may be causing you uh you know a bit of struggle i i 100 of the time it's either either one of the things that we were talking about mm-hmm. or a blend of both yeah right it's either either we've got major body image issues and that's driving your behaviors and your training and your dieting or you still got that, you know, athletic switch in your head where, you know, whenever you go after yeah. your workouts or dieting, you apply the same type of mentality. All or nothing. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. A, as an Olympic athlete, you know, and it's yeah. just like so different when we're talking about health and, and, and longevity and body composition, like it's a different ball game. So I have found that training clients like this, it is either either one of those things we talked about or a blend of the two always. No, totally. And I do, I want to say this too about athletes like this, because I've had people ask me this question and say, well, if, if, if training too much is detrimental, then why are gymnasts and divers and, you know, athletes like that, right? Uh, Maybe uh, uh, ice skaters. Why are they training so many hours during the day? Aren't they overtraining? And my answer is they are. However, those sports are so technical that the frequency and volume of training really is about perfecting their skill and technique. Mm-hmm. It's less about training their bodies. They're fit as hell already. If anything, they have they end up losing some of their fitness and strength because of so much training. But it's about, per- if you watch a gymnast, yes, they're explosive and strong, 
But look at their lines, their body control. That comes There's from so much nuance. That, that comes from doing to. Well, yes. All sports aren't healthy for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's, they're not. That, no. That's actually the not first. at that level. Definitely no. Not. I mean, all sports they they really are not healthy. But does that mean that you can't incorporate some of the sports that you love and have a healthy life? That's not what I'm saying. But competitive sports, especially at the high level, is not healthy. Any yeah. of them. Mm-hmm. You you are doing. And you like, have to recognize that and be able to move forward. And, yeah. and live a lifestyle where you know it, it's totally different than that going into longevity you have purposes. different goals yeah. when you when you are when you're competitively playing a sport i don't give a shit if my body fat percentage is up or down or i'm getting great sleep or my health or my libido no that all it cares is i'm i'm better at my sport today than i was yesterday and so and sometimes that means i'm training five hours a day to get to that level yep. it doesn't mean that it's it's bad or wrong it just means you have different goals and so you get these athletes that were highly competitive and good at their sport, and they try and apply that same mm-hmm. mentality towards getting in shape or being healthy, and they're they're two different worlds. Dude, you know how many yeah. female athletes I've trained who didn't get their period until they stopped yeah. their Crazy. competitive sport yeah. because their bodies were so hammered all the time. So it's just it's one of those things. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.